Hello and welcome to Shed TV, my name is Keith and this is part one of the Budget Ford Fiesta series. So there behind me you can see uh, my latest acquisition, uh, it's a 2006 Fiesta 1.2 petrol uh, and I paid the princely sum of 100 quid for that. Uh, still got a bit of MOT uh, and if, if, you can, uh, if you can hear it, um, it's running at the moment, it does run quite well, I've just been for a bit of a test drive. Uh, it's got one or two problems. Um, the exhaust is uh, rotten as a pair, and I've uh, just managed to kind of bodge it together just so that um, I could take it out on the road. Um, the battery was flat uh, after the car had been standing for um, the best part of a year, I think, maybe a bit less, maybe nine months. Um, and it, uh, I put a jump start, uh, a pair of jump leads on off the uh, off the mighty Mazda over there, and it started on the first turn of the key. Um, However, the battery doesn't seem to want to hold much of a much of a charge. The reason I've left the motor running now is I just want to try it in a second and see whether it's actually uh, kept any charge after the 20-mile drive that I've been on. Um, so let's give it a go. Question is then, will it restart? Hmm. <laughs> That's a fairly conclusive no. What sort of lights we're getting? We're we getting lights. Mm, no, it's just clicking. Okay, well the first job then is to fit the new battery. Seems fairly obvious to me that this battery has been in here for some time because at the moment I'm unable to undo the nut that's holding this um, fixing bar onto the top of it. It's turning a little bit but I think that's just moving in this plastic bit underneath. I'm going to work that a bit more with a bit of WD-40 and see if I can free that off. I think the other end's okay. Yeah, that's coming. A bit more work to do on this one. Don't know how well you can see this, but as I move the nut, the bolt's moving as well. Um, and underneath here, I'll try and point it with the spanner, underneath there is the other end of this uh, of this stud or bolt or whatever it is. And maybe you can see if I rock it, the plastic moving. The head's obviously moving round about in the bottom there. I think the only way I'm going to get this out is to grip hold of the top of this trying uh, as best I can not to damage it and then try and work the nut free. Still struggling with that nut and I'm starting to uh, starting to lose the light a bit as you can see. Uh, so I've rather comically connected the uh, battery up to uh, the new battery with a pair of jump leads. Hopefully I can start the car and uh, drive it into the shed where there's a bit more light. No problem there. You know, that blowing exhaust, <laughs> just going to drive into the shed. Now that I've got a bit more light, uh, I've been able to cut a slot in the top of the screw with a uh, hacksaw. I've got this old screwdriver, I'm just going to tap it into the slot. Okay, so that's opened out the slot a bit. Um, obviously that's going to cause a problem getting the nut up the thread if I can actually get it moving uh, but I'm hoping that it'll give me enough purchase to be able to loosen it in the first place then take the screwdriver away and maybe wind the nut up the thread let's see what happens Ooh. that's what happens top of the bolt breaks off okay then um, what I'm going to do now. I think what I'm going to do is take this bar off the other end, see if I can spin it round out of the way and get the battery out before I go any further. That end's coming off just fine. The camera's fallen into the engine bay. It looks like the battery tray is held in by these three uh, 17 mil bolts, so I'm going to take that those three out and uh, hopefully I can lift the whole battery tray out and then maybe I can get to the back of this and uh, take it apart without damaging the plastic. There are two T25 Torx screws to take out, one here at the top and another one at the bottom there and once they're removed it's simply a case of sliding this panel out. A 
bit difficult to do holding the camera in my hand but that leaves you with the complete tray um, and then this, uh, this piece here uh, for the negative side uh, disconnected on the bench and uh, I've managed to break off the other bit of that uh, remaining bit of um, <laughs> thread at the top there looking at this it looks to me where that plastic slightly bulges that there's probably a nut uh, sorry there's probably a bolt head under there and that's actually a bolt going through there um, I think what I'm going to do is cut through this bolt in here with a hacksaw and then I'm going to put this whole thing in the pillar drill and try and drill through the centre of the bolt right out through to the side uh, and then I'm going to put a bolt right the way right the way through that's the undamaged side of the uh, battery box and uh, this side uh, what I've done is taken this bolt here and I've uh, ground a bit of the head off so it sits flush against this side where I've cut away all of the plastic moulding that was there and I put a nut in the top there to keep it down tight um, and I'm going to use some of this uh, Gorilla Glue epoxy I'll put a big gob of it in there fill that section up with epoxy and hopefully that will hold that in place there we go, so uh, that's supposed to take five minutes to set um, might, might take a little bit longer than that because quite a lot of it on there 48 hours have gone by since I glued this bolt into here uh, and this epoxy has gone absolutely rock solid you can see and that bolt seems to have uh, held well uh, so I'm just going to try and undo that uh, nut so hopefully that um, nut will come undone oops there we go uh, I'm just going to try tightening that up make sure it doesn't break out of the I'm trying to do this one handed that's quite tight that hasn't moved hasn't moved one bit uh, I think it's fair to say that's uh, a triumph uh, I'm going to put this back in the car first of all I'm going to give it a little bit of a wipe over That's the battery box uh, bolted down, back in place, uh, and the um, uh, the two uh, live and negative um, uh, electronic sections, if you like, pulse bars, whatever they are, clipped back into place. Um, that's all uh, good and solid, and I've given it a bit of a clean up. Uh, as you can see, wherever I've put a bolt back in, I've put some copper slip um, anti seize compound. There we go, that's that stuff. Various different brands of that available, but it's basically the same thing copper impregnated grease um, so hopefully uh, I won't run into any problems with these threads seizing up again um, time to put the new battery in here's the uh, retaining bar uh, it was very crusty I've given it a bit of a clean and then wipe over with a bit of oil uh, so that can go back on and be tightened down. Okay, that's good and secure. Uh, that's an MOT requirement that the battery's fixed down properly, so uh, no problems with the MOT man there. Before I uh, put the battery terminals on, I like to put a bit of Vaseline on the uh, on the posts, smear it on liberally, and that uh, will hopefully prevent any corrosion and keep a good contact. Put the battery terminals back on. Obviously put the red live lead on first before you connect the negative and that way if you catch the back of your spanner against the, uh, the bodywork anywhere it's not going to cause a massive flash and potentially an explosion. That doesn't tighten very well so I'm going to loosen that right off and I'm going to tap the uh, terminal a bit further down the post. Doing that quite gently uh, because uh, obviously I don't want to break my new battery. 
That might be very sad. Negative terminal looks like it uh, wants the same treatment. Incidentally, that's a copper-headed hammer I was using there to avoid any damage to the screws that hold the battery together. Right, that is all good and tight and secure. Just the plastic uh, insulator over the live terminals put in place. I'm going to have it white. Yeah, everything are white. And we're ready to fire it up. Last triumph. Um, in this instance it was obvious that the battery was looking at it. Um, but if, uh, if I was in any doubt about whether the battery or the alternator or whatever, uh, I could have performed some tests. Uh, and if you look in my uh, video section, if you're interested in that, there's, um, uh, there's a film about um, testing the alternator and the uh, battery. Well, that's the first and uh, most important job done in, um, in getting the car back on the road. New battery in and running, uh, and uh, the car uh, started under its own power, which is uh, kind of useful. Um, the other obvious thing it needs doing, of course, is the exhaust that I uh, alluded to earlier on. Uh, <laughs> I can't make myself heard over it. As you can probably hear, uh, it's still blowing quite badly. Um, it's booked in now at uh, half past twelve and it's now uh, getting on for that time I need to get going um, in the town. So I'm going to go and get a new exhaust put on. Um, why don't you join me in part two uh, where we'll have a look at the other issues that there are with the car uh, and what I'm going to do to, um, uh, to get it happy and roadworthy again. Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed this, hope you found it useful. Um, if you have or even if you haven't, uh, please uh, uh, leave a comment underneath, let me know what you think, uh, give me a thumbs up and, uh, and do subscribe if you can, that, uh, that really does help. Thanks very much then, bye now.